So I finish the race, um, shake his hand, and I just want to take a selfie, you know, with him, like, in the vicinity. So right after shaking his hand, I'm, like, trying to position myself. And there's this guy, like, trying to, like, shake my hand or, or, or something. I figured he was in my way or whatever. I'm like, whatever. It turns out it was Phil Bork. I didn't know he was there. Like, oh, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Phil. You're like not. You're knocking him out of the way. You're like, uh, hey, I'm trying to get to Mario here, friend. Seriously. Move it on. Network and the Podhop Network. In this episode, I talk to Penguins Radio Network host Brian Metzer about what's going on with the Penguins. As always, please follow or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. The Donut Bag starts right now. Penguins with a big two to one shootout victory over the Islanders last night. With me to talk about it and other things, Penguins is Brian Metzer. He is host of the Penguins Radio Network writer for Pittsburgh Current, and owner of FromThePoint.com. Brian, welcome. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. I know uh, we talked before we went live at the show here that we've interacted on Twitter for quite some time, and it's uh, a pleasure to join you for some spirited hockey talk here on your podcast, as Paul Steigerwald would call it. He always says spirited hockey talk on our Saturday morning show. Oh, man, I'm glad you mentioned that. I love your Saturday morning show with Steige. Oh, my goodness. That is, uh, it's a great, it's a great uh, thing. It's a, it's a great hockey talk. I, uh, I enjoy it a lot. It's great stuff. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and we, uh, I believe this Saturday, just in case people are paying attention to it, we will probably have Josh Getzoff and I hosting the show because with Josh calling games now, he's so infrequently available to do it uh, with us because he's on the road. But it, I think it'll be Josh and I live from PPG Paints Arena. So you'll you'll have that, and we'll probably have Staggy late in the show for his segment that he does when Josh and I do it. But it's a blast. We love to get in a, a little bit of everything on that show. So thanks for listening, and, and, and thanks for uh, mentioning that, that you enjoyed it because it's sometimes a grind to get up on Saturday mornings for the, yeah. uh, the span of the hockey season. But I love when people are out there listening and, and digging the show. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really good, and I don't, I don't. It's not appointment listening, but I just happen to be around, and it's like, oh, nine o'clock on a Saturday. It's, oh my God, hey, this is great, great hockey talk. This is cool. So, <laughs> very well, thank cool. you. So, Penguins, big win last night. Just just a real gritty effort, and um, Casey DeSmith just standing on his head. What's he's he? They've had to really rely on him lately, and uh, looks like he's coming up big. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I've been really impressed with Casey DeSmith's game. There's been a couple of moments where you know he allows a bad goal from time to time, which a lot of a lot of the younger goaltenders, in terms of of service time, because I know he's not young in age, but just with service time, he's not been around a ton. But you're going to have a bad goal from time to time. But generally. He's been solid, rock solid for this team during the absence of Matt Murray specifically. He's been a big reason why they've been able to collect points in 9 of 11, I believe it is now. He was outstanding against the Islanders last night, the way that he went out and um, even shined in the shootout, something that he's faltered in in the past. He made every big save that they needed, and he gave them every opportunity to go out and earn the extra point against a, an, a, an opponent that they really needed an extra point against because they're pretty much jumping over the Islanders back and forth almost every single night that either team plays right now for that third spot in the Metropolitan Division. And, and I think you could really point to, to Casey DeSmith as a big reason for the fact that they're back in the playoff hunt now after starting the season sort of miserably. Yeah. Yeah, he, he made his fifth straight start, ninth in his last 12. Basically, it's it's all him right now, and he is coming up. And uh, it was it was interesting. That was the, their first win um, this season when scoring less than three goals. So uh, it was it was nice that they didn't have to score too much, and they were actually getting um, a really solid uh, contribution from DeSmith. Now. 
Yeah, I completely agree with you there. Just to give you a quick thought, uh, and and the, it's not as if he didn't have to do any heavy lifting in that scenario. You would think, it, looking at a two-one game, oh uh, well, Casey DeSmith had it easy. He still had to face twenty-six shots, and I thought he was outstanding in, in making all the big saves that he needed to. So uh, the defense definitely tightening up a little bit in front of him, but they still allowed a couple of those grade A opportunities, specifically early and then again late, and he was right there to uh, to carry the load. One thing that you should uh, that people should pay attention to. Penguins with, I believe it was 24 block shots last night, three of which came in overtime on that penalty kill. That really helped Casey DeSmith as well. That's another thing. It, it seems like, you know, when you have that many block shots, there's that, there's definitely a commitment to, you know, defense and, and doing whatever it takes. So it's nice to see, cause it looked like that really wasn't happening earlier in the season and looks like they're really uh, starting to get that in gear. Yeah, I think I, th- I think it's something that points to them rounding into form and becoming the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I know people equate them with offense and running up a bunch of goals, etc. But when you looked at the Penguins teams that won the Stanley Cups over the those two years, just a couple of seasons ago, they were so good about going out there and blocking shots and playing for one another and and giving up the body, even in meaningless, supposedly meaningless games. I know at this point of the season, they're all going to be very huge for them, and every point's going to count the rest of the way. But I, I really thought that that was impressive to see a guy like Brian Rust go out and block a shot in overtime. Zach Aston Reese had two big blocks in overtime, and then he was in agony on the bench. And those are guys that maybe aren't producing a ton in terms of offense, and they've been under a microscope here, and people have been critical of them. If they're going to do those kinds of things, they're going to endear themselves to the veteran players on this team. I know Brian Rust is sort of a veteran now in and of himself, but generally speaking, you know what I mean. The, uh, the stars and the guys that are carrying the load are going to say, you know what? Those guys might not be scoring right now and doing what we need them to do in that part of the game. But if they're blocking shots and giving up their bodies and and leaving it all out there and playing the blue-collar game, I think that's going to really go a long way towards helping this team win games, and it certainly did last night. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Derek Broussard scored the goal in the third period. That was another thing is they they were down uh, going into the third period, and their, their record isn't very good. Uh, when they're trailing and so that was nice for them to uh to tie it up but where do you see Broussard uh, I mean he was playing with with Gensel and Crosby is do you think he prefers to do that or or is it, I mean it's, it sounds like maybe he's not maybe the best fit uh, as that third line center that said, I still want them to give him a look there at the third line uh, or in the third line center role only because I still believe the Penguins are at their best when they have that strength down the middle. When you can have Sidney Crosby on the top line, if Kenny Malkin on line two, have him available to play on the third line. Because the, the thing is, we, we still haven't really seen a healthy Broussard in this lineup as a third line center for an extended period of time. Because every time he starts to get his legs under him and he starts to get some chemistry going with any line mates that they happen to have him out there with, he gets hurt again. Or something happens where he sh- uh, shuffled up the lineup. So... While he was able to go out and score a goal off the wing last night, I don't, I don't know that it was a goal that came because he was on the wing of that line. I mean, it was just sort of one of those blue-collar hard work goals around the net where he just kept you know, pushing at it and, and trying for it and was able to chip it by Robin Lehner. So I don't know that I saw enough in that, uh, I guess, sample size last night to think that I want him there. Um, I, I'm curious to see if they put Phil Kessel back there again at some point or what they're going to do, but I really believe that in the long run they're going to be in pretty good shape if they can have Derek Broussard on the third line in that center role, specifically when Patrick Hornquist is, is healthy, just because you really don't need to shuffle a guy like Hornquist down the lineup to make room for Derek Broussard in your top six because Hornquist is so good up there. I feel like he plays well with both Sid and Gino, so why displace him in favor of moving Broussard up there when you can have him on the third line and maybe if you can find the right mix of wingers for him, have yourself a, a, a pretty decent third line, and maybe it comes down to just getting him a couple more minutes per night as a third line center. Don't limit that line's uh, time on ice all that much so that you're able to roll three lines pretty much shift upon shift upon shift, which is something Mike Sullivan likes to do unless they're trailing in games. If they can change their game to the point where they're starting to to win, play good defensively, and they have leads in games, you won't see him go to a short bench with just the top two lines out, and maybe that opens it up for Broussard to play a little more as a third-line center, which makes him a better team, I think. Yeah, yeah. 
it, you know, people keep saying, well, he's not a fit. He's he needs to be traded. But I think that's just a big mistake. I mean, I, I agree that that strong three centers thing. It just it, 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 it really works. And I mean, the, the other thing is, what if Crosby or Malkin get hurt? He would be perfect to go into one of those top two lines. It would, you know, it, it would be great. So. I, I really, yeah, you're right. I think he just needs a chance. I think they just need to figure out the right people with him, and uh, and, and and he'll be fine. Hopefully, hopefully he'll be stuck around enough to, uh, to yeah. see that. I mean, well, when you think about the assets they gave up to acquire him, and I thought it was funny. I, I heard a radio host in the city the other day say, oh, well, would you take Ryan Reeves back for Derek Broussard? And I'm like, well, it wasn't a one-for-one trade. So it's kind of a, an interesting way that they're saying that. They gave up the goaltending prospect in, in Gustafson. They gave up a first-round draft pick, etc. So when you think of the assets you gave up, I don't feel that you're going to get near that kind of value to trade him now. So you've hitched yourself to this cart. You've got a little cap relief to do it. So you've got to find a way to make it work. I might not have made the trade to begin with last year because I don't feel like I – mean, yeah, at the time it was one of those things we were all like, wow, because it, it was a shock and awe kind of trade because he had name value, name recognition. Everybody was like, wow, Derek Broussard, he could be this great fit. The Penguins are going to be so strong down the middle. Then you start tearing his game apart a little bit even before he played, and you go, well, he's never been a great face-off guy. He doesn't kill a lot of penalties. <laughs> he doesn't do this. So maybe he wasn't the best fit for a third-line center, which is why we're even having this conversation about if he should play wing. But I feel like if you give him the chance, you, you made the deal, you gave up the assets, keep him on board here. You tried to trade him over the summer from what I've been told by a couple of people. Nobody wanted to do the deal because they were trying to get younger and they didn't want the contract, etc. So Derek Broussard's a penguin. Will he be at the end of the year? I don't know. But make the best of a, of a situation that you have now with this center depth that has offensive upside on your roster. Play him on the third line, and I think you'll eventually be rewarded for that. The key is going to be stop the revolving door of wingers there and try and find a fit for him with a line that he can stick with and start to be productive with. Yeah, just let him play with somebody for like 10 games. The same people. Let's let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but one thing before – Broussard was on Crosby's line last night. There was Crosby and Ketzel, and it worked, um, what, a game or two ago when Ketzel scored, but it didn't work so well last night. Why can't that work? It just seems like oh, – I mean, I know I know that's Sullivan's philosophy, and I actually heard uh, Stagy talk about that um, last Saturday morning, that maybe instead of having such balance on the three lines, you just – you know, you put, you put your good guys um, up top, but – it, it 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 seems like they never try Crosby and Kessel for very long. Like, do they just are they just like oil and water? It, maybe to a certain extent. Um, they're both guys that like to have the puck, obviously. So when you have Phil Kessel and Sid on, and that's sort of the same issue you have with with Kessel and Gino. That one just seems to work a little bit more effectively at times. And people people always say, well. Uh, Sid and, and Kessel were eventually going to be yelling at each other. Well, Gino and Phil yell at each other quite a bit, too, so I don't know that that has a lot to do with it. I just think that right now, for whatever reason, and for as many points as Phil's rolling up, and I know he's on, a, you know, he's on this pace for pushing 100 points, etc., he's not been a great 5-on-5 five five player this year for some reason. And I don't know why, and I think there's a number of players on the Penguins roster that are dealing with this right now. Evgeny Malkin is in that boat. He's not been an, an outstanding 5-on-5 five five player. So for whatever reason, uh, it's regardless of the line that they're on, they're just not very productive unless they're on the power play. Phil Kessel only has something like two 5-on-5 five five goals in his last 19 or 20 games. So that's kind of an eye-opener for a guy that scores as frequently as Phil does. Now, granted, he's giving you the production on the power play, which is great, but I, I know that uh, that's what I like the best about that, that uh, cameo he got with Sid the other night was that he scored a 5-on-5er. Five five and not that that's the end of the, the world if he doesn't score at even strength, but that would help the Penguins if they're able to be more productive with all players on the ice, and I still think he might go back to that well again before it's all said and done. He might give them another look together. They seem to – last night was a, obviously something that didn't stick with or they chose not to stick with it against the Islanders. I don't know if it's anything that the Isles did to disrupt uh, Sid and Phil or if it was just the Senators gave them a lot more space. 
I fully believe that Phil will read and react off of Sid pretty well down in the offensive zone. It's a matter of how he gets back and maybe for, uh, gets back on the back check on Sid's line that might be making the determining factor for that line. So, uh, Mike may not have liked what he said.